everybody, welcome to Coda. My name's Maria Marquis, and in this video series, we're gonna take a look at some of the most common patterns that I see in docs that you can reuse, remix, and recycle over and over again to get those really, really solid patterns that power those great docs out there. Now, lucky for all of you here at Coda, we really love to save some time. So a lot of the templates I'll be showing you can be accessed right inside of your doc just by typing slash. So the first one of these patterns we're gonna take a look at is topic voting. So I'm gonna type slash and then topic voting, there it is. And I'm just gonna give it a click. It's gonna pull in that in-doc template here. So let's look at the pattern that's at play. This template has two things, a button that adds to the table and a button that modifies each of these rows. So I can click add topic, notice it adds that row, and then I can have this button and I can click it and it modifies the row by showing that I have voted for it. So it's added my name into the list of upvoters. That's all that's happening here. Button that adds and a button that modifies. But let's see how we can actually apply this pattern in a couple different use cases and really take this starting place and make it our own. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is a personal example, but you'll see over here on the left, all the different examples I'm gonna show you here today. So the personal example here, I was thinking, well, what would I need to use in my life to get people to contribute and then let me know how they feel about something? And I immediately thought of having a book club. So I took this template and I just made a few adjustments to really make it more applicable for this use case. So the first thing I did is I just changed what this button said. So instead of add a topic, like we see here in the basic template, I just had it say, add a book you think we should read. So I did that by just right clicking and I just changed the label right here. But everything else about this button is the same, except I also made it purple and changed the icon that I wanted it to see. Other than that, the button is still a button that adds. Then if we come down here to the table, I made a couple other adjustments. The first being I changed some of the labels here on the columns, right? Because we're not using this to vote on topics, we're using it to vote on books. So I have a book column. This is just the topic that's been renamed. I added a column by clicking on that little plus sign and I called it, why should we read it? So that people can give their pitch for why that's gonna be helpful. And I added another column to be the link to the book. The other thing I did is I hit a couple of those columns that were doing the calculation uh, by just clicking on columns and then clicking on the little eyeball icon next to the element. But that's gonna allow me to keep it nice and clean. The last thing I did to really make this kind of fit better for the use case is I changed the icon. Because if we go back to that topic voting area, notice it's that thumbs up here, which sure, I could do that for my book club, but I am a big fan of making things feel more like you. So you can always do that just by opening up your buttons menu under button options. And here now we can see everything that's going on underneath the hood. So up here at the top, the label for this button is actually a formula because we want to change how this button looks depending on if you voted on it or not. In this case, we only want people to vote once. You wouldn't have to do that. So let's take a look at this formula. It says if the upvoters in this row contains whoever is pushing this button, that's the user, then I want it to be an X. So you can't vote again. But if it is uh, something you haven't voted on yet, if you're not listed in the upvoters column, I want it to be this little bookmark. And all I did is I just grabbed an emoji and I pasted it in there uh, to be a little bit different. But everything else about this button is the same. Everything else exactly the same. So here we've got a starting place. What I did here is I just changed the labels on some things and added some columns to make it fit a little bit more. So let's take a look at this pattern for a freelancer example. So here I was imagining, what if I'm um, a writer and there's a lot of different articles that I write on my own blog and maybe submit to other different publications. Now, one of the things I might want to do as a writer is understand from my audience, what are they interested in? So I used this particular template and made again a couple adjustments so that more, it's more customized for what we're looking for. So just like my book club, I just changed the label on this particular button, the button that adds, just by going here and making that change. Everything else completely the same. Then here I decided to keep the button that modifies in that thumbs up. It seemed to work really well for voting, but I changed the label here to just say idea. So we know what's your idea for an article that you'd like to read. I'm keeping the counts over here because I found it kind of interesting, but I could certainly hide them like we did with the book club example. The other thing that I did that I changed here is I thought, you know, what would be really great is if people uh, submit an idea 
if I can close the loop with them, letting them know when that idea has been published. So I just clicked on the plus sign and I added a button column. And under the button options, you notice that I'm using the Gmail pack. So this button actually sends an email from my email account to whoever is in that upvoters column. That's why I'm keeping it there. So anyone who upvotes it, I want them to know, hey, this is available. The subject of the email is your article is live, and then I could put whatever content I want in the email. So hi, thank you for requesting this. I could fill this in with whatever I liked. And then I just made it red and gave it a little light angle. So in this case, this one's relatively unchanged. It's very much still a topic voting, but we've just added a couple elements to really make it even more customized for that use case. Pro tip if you're thinking about something like this. This is based on what we'd actually do at Coda to track all of our different requests for packs folks would like us to build, is that you can always decide to share it and publish it. And then once I publish it, I could choose to have it be on edit mode. This means that people will be making changes to it that then stay consistent. So it's like I'll have a leaderboard that I can point people to. So just a bit of a pro tip there. All right, on to our next way of using this particular template. In this case, I put myself in the shoes of a product manager. And if I'm a product manager, you could imagine that I probably have a lot of meetings I need to go to where I need to be able to understand what questions people have and also create a space where people can share some praise. And this is actually based on some of the work one of our amazing makers, Yuki, has done with his team over at Figma. So here, I actually made very few changes. I actually kept this button the same. I kept all of the labels the same. The only thing I did differently is I just added another button. So the uh, question button, let's just go ahead and add a little topic here. Um, notice we could say, oh, I've got a question. So just like the book club under our button options here, I just changed the label to be a question mark instead of a thumbs up just by pasting that emoji in here. And we could go ahead and say, oh, I've got a question. And then I changed the label to be, oh, who's asking the question? But then I thought, you know, I also want to have this praise element. So I made a very similar button just by adding this little plus button here, making it a button column. And then I pretty much just stole all of the ideas from this question asking button and put them in here. So if I go to the button options, you'll notice I have the exact same general label, except instead of pulling from question asker, I'm pulling from praise giver. And I made the emoji be a little heart here. Then if we go on down, it's still modifying. It's still modifying the row in this particular table. And notice I'm just making the update values here. This is pulled from the question asker, which comes out of the box from this particular template. Only thing I did is I just changed it from being question asker to be praise giver. So if we go over here to the question area, which again came out just without me doing anything special, and I go in here, I just go ahead and select this. I'm on a Mac, so I did Command C. I pasted it over here into my Praise Giver one. And instead of having it say Question Asker, I just put Praise Giver in instead. Otherwise, full copy paste. So now people can say, oh, I've got a question. And they can also say, oh, I love this. And in our meeting, we can see all of that happen. We have that over and again. So that's our product manager example. Everything is the same, except I changed what these two columns were called. And I added a little clone button right here. So now let's take a look at the small business example. So here, I was thinking about a small business. It's really important for us to stay connected and give praise and thank yous and kudos to each other. It's a really important part of working together. So I took this topic voting template and I made it for giving employee kudos. So just like with every other template we've seen, I changed the label on this button just by going right in there. And then I just changed the label on the column, calling it kudos. I then decided, you know, we want to make sure we're making sure we're calling it out for different people. So I just chose to add a column and I called it coworker to thank. And in this case, I made it a people column. So if this people options, the nice thing is, is it's going to pull all of the people from your Coda instance so that you can choose them from a drop down menu and it'll have their little avatar, which is nice. Then the other thing I did here is I just changed the label on this button by going to button options. And right up here at the top, I just pasted in a heart emoji. And I then changed it to just be calling vote so people can then pile on the love just by doing it just like so. So you could then imagine this being an opportunity for people to post all of those. You could put it on a website. You could send it out in an email. You could also decide to change how this looks. Maybe I want to go to the options and make it a detailed view. 
we could go ahead and see it by every single person. Of course, if you had all of your labels, it would be included in here and you would see it much, much more clearly if it had actual data in it. But it allows you to accomplish that exact same thing. So even though we're doing something different, wanting to gather praise rather than ideas, all of that pattern is still helping us by saying a button that adds and a button that modifies. All right, let's take a look at the last example, which is for a consulting firm. And here, when I was thinking about a consulting firm, one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna make sure we know who has the certain skills, who has the bandwidth, who can help out. So what I did here is I thought, let's create a table for client needs, and then people can say, yes, I have this expertise. They can raise their hand. So just like with everything, I changed the label on this button to just say, add a client need. I also changed the label here under button options, making it a hand wave. So like, hey, I'm raising my hand for it instead of a thumbs up. And I also changed the uh, column here to say I'm volunteering instead of voting. But everything else is the same. We've got the volunteers instead of the questions and the topics, just change the title of your column and then we're well on your way. So now people could say, oh, the client need is uh, someone who's implemented um, SSO at a government organization. And we can go ahead and say, oh, me, I raised my hand for it. So the same thing's happening here. So if we head back to that core template where we started today, notice the pattern, no matter what we're using it for, the pattern holds true. and re You can reuse and remix it however you want. That button that adds and the button that modifies. And again, you can always get to it just by typing slash and topic voting. Slash is gonna be your entry point for all the other templates that we have at your disposal as well. With that, give it a try. Customize it for yourself and let us know how it goes. All right, I'll see you next time.